Hi, I'm Tony Poulos and I'm at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Today I'm with Tim Yaten, who is the Senior Vice President of Infrastructure Business at Red Hat. Tim, great to catch up. Tell me, what is network functional virtualization and why is it different from what's been available in the past? Historically, most of the network infrastructure used by carriers was built out of a set of uh, single purpose appliances that were put together in packages that were literally hardware appliances. Uh, the trouble with that is it's a high fixed cost and it, and it limited their ability to be much more flexible and agile in delivering new workloads and services to their end customers. So network function virtualization was created to basically do software virtualization in place of those hardware appliances. And it's allowed for much uh, greater agility, much faster delivery of new services to customers. And so it, it's, it's not just an important technology, it really represents the transformation of this entire industry. And what are the biggest benefits of NFV to communication service providers or CSPs? So the benefits of NFE are, are, are multiple. Number one, you can first re-implement the traditional VNFs, virtual network function applications, in a much more flexible, fast way. Most importantly though, it now enables you to move much quicker in delivering new services uh, that scale better. So uh, scalability, security, performance, all those are things that, that come with the software-defined infrastructure, including NFE. And what specifically do CSPs have to have in place to take full advantage of NFV? Well, the biggest adjustment we see uh, CSPs needing to do is to think about an architecture. It's a software architecture. There are references. Uh, ETSI here in Europe has a, a standard architecture. But it's really about building a software platform uh, that enables scaling out of these uh, functions, these network functions, typically built on open stack or a technology like that, a cloud infrastructure technology, and having a corresponding uh, what we call mono, management operations framework. So you really need those elements to build a complete uh, software-defined telco platform. And how does Red Hat work with partners to actually deploy NFV solutions? It's very interesting uh, for Red Hat. Red Hat has historically been servicing you know, telcos and carriers for many, many years in their IT operations. So this is the first time with the advent of software-defined infrastructure for telcos that we've been part of their fabric, part of their ecosystem. Now, the interesting dynamic here is NFV and the technologies that it's built upon, the platform technologies, are all being innovated in open source on platforms like OpenStack, Open Daylight, and those are the sort of core to our roots, right? We're uh, very uh, instrumental in you know, open source uh, innovation generally, and specifically the technologies that telcos are using. So now we're able to serve the telco industry uh, in ways that play uniquely to our strengths, taking uh, innovative open source projects, turning them into mission critical uh, consumables, delivering you know, carrier grade kinds of high availability in software with military grade security. That's, that's really what we're good at and that's what the telco industry needs right now. And what are some of the things that CSP should look for when they're evaluating NFV solutions? Well, I think the first thing uh, uh, any carrier, anybody who, uh, pursuing NFV solutions needs to look at is the, the life cycle and the quality of the technology because these are going into mission critical deployments requiring five nines or better of availability. So there's lots of ways to experiment with some of these open source upstream technologies. But the real question is when you're thinking about taking that into production, building a platform, leveraging NFV, building your, your service on top of that, that has to be absolutely bulletproof. And so vendors that are able to do that and work uniquely with that open source community model at the same time. Tim, thanks very much for explaining that. Great to catch up. Thank you very much. Thank you.